the DJI M30T versus the DJI Matrice 4T. Which one is right for you? We're gonna talk about the specs, we're gonna talk about the similarities and the differences. Don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today, we are talking about the DJI Matrice 30T, one of the most beloved drones to like police departments, fire departments, public safety, and all sorts of other industries. The M30T is a huge hit, but today we're gonna talk about the new kit on the block, the DJI Matrice 4T. So the Matrice 4T just came out very recently, uh, and I know there have been a lot of videos out there, but we just recently had a chance to get our hands on the 4T and the 4E, which is the non-thermal version. So we've been testing it a lot. So we wanted to put it up against the M30T because so many people love that drone. It has been the cream of the crop. Uh, for the last several years. And just a reminder, we sell both of these drones, so please reach out to the number below or down in the description. You can contact us as well, of course, via email. Uh, so please reach out to us, we'll be happy to talk to you. But now let's get on to the comparison between the M30T and the M4T. First of all, we wanna talk about the thermal sensors, 640 by 512 thermal resolution. Now they are both capable of having like this super resolution mode, which doubles the resolution on it. I, in a previous video, I said that uh, only the M4T had that, but that's not the case. Uh, the M30T and the M4T both have the capabilities of having that increased thermal sensor. Both of these look great. I'm not an expert, but it is really hard to tell the difference between the thermal on both of these drones. You, you can't go wrong either way. And with either one of them, you're gonna be able to see accurate heat signatures from 400 feet. Both drones have night scene mode, which is basically gonna give you the ability to see better in the dark. It sort of takes in all of the ambient light in your surroundings, the, the moonlight, street lamps, uh, anything that is providing light and just ups the ISO and gives you the ability to see in a dark environment. Going back to that thermal camera, you've got the same functions on both drones. Essentially, uh, you can touch the screen and get the temperature for any pixel on there. You can do an isotherm where you draw a box on the screen and it's gonna show you the hottest and the coldest point within that box. So that can be really useful for a lot of different applications. And you can zoom significantly with both of the thermal sensors on these drones. Now, the further you zoom in, especially with the thermal, the muddier it's all gonna get. You'll still be able to see a heat signature, but you're probably not gonna be able to tell what it is. If it's an animal or a person, uh, you're probably not gonna be able to tell what it is, but it is there in case you need it. You're also gonna have multiple palettes to choose from with the thermal on both of these drones. There's over a dozen of them, I think. And really it's just gonna be whichever one is easiest for you to see that heat signature. Like I've said before, a lot of our police departments and public safety agencies like to use black hot or white hot. It just seems to be the easiest way for them to be able to spot a heat signature. Try them out and see which one works best for you. Both of them have 48 megapixel wide angle cameras on these specific drones. These are the cameras that are gonna be used for something like mapping. Now, neither the Matrice 4T or the Matrice 30T are ideal for mapping. Really, if you're wanting to have some accurate and high quality maps, you're gonna to wanna to use something like the DJI Matrice 4E. It is built for mapping, got a mechanical shutter, and it just checks the boxes in terms of quality and accuracy, especially when using RTK. Uh, so if mapping is what you're looking for, you might wanna look at something like the Matrice 4E instead. Let's talk about the zoom range. The Matrice 4T has a 112 times hybrid zoom. So it's got a wide angle camera, it's then got a medium telephoto camera, and it's got a regular telephoto camera. So as it zooms, it's gonna go a certain way digital, then it's gonna switch to the other camera, and then it's gonna zoom farther until it gets to 112 times. It's great to have this functionality on it, and this is actually twice the zoom range of the Mavic 3T, so big upgrade on this one. The M30T, on the other hand, has a 16 times optical zoom, and then you've got a further zoom range up to 200 times. So almost twice the amount of zoom range that you're getting from the M30T. Substantial zoom ranges on both of them, but the M30T does take the cake a little bit in this instance. They both have laser range finders. We've used them both. We've successfully gotten both of them to work at over a mile away. Uh, 
this thing is pretty incredible in the way that it holds onto its target. With both of these drones, you've got a side-by-side -side option, so you can see the thermal in one side, and you can see the zoom camera or the color camera on the right-hand side. And this is just gonna help when you're doing something like inspection work or search and rescue work, you're gonna be able to see both images at the same time. And you can switch them out, of course, if you want to and go full screen with either one of them. But that is something that has been really, really beneficial to a lot of our clients. Now let's talk about the FPV camera on the Matrice 30T. The Matrice 4T does not have an FPV camera. So the FPV camera just sits on the front of the M30T. It's just another camera that looks straight ahead. It's not a gimbal, you can't turn it or anything like that. But that can be used for two reasons, for either two remotes hooked up to the drone at the same time. So for instance, one person would be the pilot. They're literally pushing the sticks up and down, left and right, they're controlling the drone. Well, with a second remote, you can actually have another person that will then just control the camera. So they don't have to worry about anything else. They're just controlling that gimbal camera at the bottom. What the Matrice 4T does have that the M30T does not, and maybe that'll come up in a future update or something like that, but the Matrice 4T has what's called vision assist. So if you look at the bottom right hand corner of the remote that I'm showing you right now, you'll see a little grayed out box with uh, what looks like propellers flying in it or something like that. Click on that, you can then pick forward, backward, left, right, or down. You can look out of the sensors on this drone. There are so many sensors around it. You can actually look out of them and that's gonna give you more awareness. If you're getting close to something, you'll be able to look right out of the side of the drone and see if there's something close to you. And both of these are very, very well protected drones when it comes to sensors. There's sensors all over them, uh, 360 degrees, and they're gonna tell you if you're gonna wreck into something or if you're getting too close to something. So you gotta listen to them pay attention, but with the M4T, it actually has a second use and that you can actually look out of those cameras and see what your surroundings are. Flight time on the M30T is listed at 41 minutes. So realistically, depending on how you're actually flying, you're probably gonna get something more like the 32 to 35 minute range. The Matrice 4T has a very impressive 49 minutes of listed flight time. So realistically, you're looking, you know, like, 40 minutes maybe, 38 to 40 minutes, maybe 41, 42. Again, depending on the conditions and depending on how you're actually flying. All right, let's talk about those batteries that are responsible for that flight time. With the M30T, you need two batteries. So two TB30 batteries. So you gotta keep that in mind because the Matrice 4T only uses one battery. So in terms of replacements down the line, if you got batteries that go bad, you're gonna have to buy double the amount of batteries. So keep that in mind. But the big benefit of having those two batteries is you can do a hot swap with the M30T. So the drone lands, you go in, you take one battery out, put a new one in, take the other battery out, put a new one in, and it is right back up in the air. You don't have to like reboot anything. It's just ready to go. Whereas with the M4T, you're gonna have to land, you're gonna have to take the battery out, turning the drone off, then you put a new battery in, turn it back on, wait for it to reboot. Uh, still, it's not gonna take a ton of time, but it is nice to have that hot swap option. For operating temperatures, for the M4T, you are looking at 14 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That's its ideal operational range. Obviously, you could probably push that a little further in, in either direction. For the M30T, it's actually negative four all the way up to 122 degrees. So you're definitely getting a lot more with the M30T in terms of the elements. And is it gonna mess up your drone if it's negative four out? Well, in this case, no, it's not. The weather rating on the M30T is IP55. So I have flown this thing in rain, in snow, you don't have to worry about it. It's gonna do well. I mean, maybe if you're in like a complete downpour or a blizzard, you, you don't wanna push it, but the drone handles great in bad weather and rain and snow. You gotta make sure when you're done flying that you wipe it all down, get it dry, but it really does a great job in those elements. Whereas the Matrice 4T is not weather rated. So you don't wanna be flying this thing in rain or snow or any precipitation really because it can really screw up the drone and we don't want to do that. Max wind speed is 27 miles per hour on both of these drones. Again, you probably could push that without much of a problem, but try to stay within those parameters. But yeah, 27 miles per hour is what DJI says and you have to decide for yourself uh, if you're gonna push those or not. The Matrice 4T goes 42 miles an hour in sport mode. The Matrice 30T will go 51 miles per hour in sport mode. 
but we don't suggest flying in sport mode. That turns off all your sensors. The deployment time on both of these drones, it's gonna be less than a minute. The Matrice 4T will probably be a little quicker. It's just less bulky. You're not having to carry around as big of a box. Uh, you don't have to put two batteries in, but yeah, under a minute to get this thing out of the truck, get it on the ground, open the box up and fly it away. It's gonna be less than a minute with both of these drones. All right, so the remote transmission on these things is crazy. DJI says 15 miles for the Matrice 4T. Yeah, that's a long way and that means no interference and you're never gonna be able to get that. The M30T says nine miles. We've flown long distances still within our line of sight, but we have flown long ways without having any transmission problems. I've said this before too, don't push it. Like don't try to do a test on how far it'll go because it's gonna be out of your line of sight and that's a bad idea. RTK is built into both of these drones. They both have RTK antennas built in, whereas something like the Mavic 3T does not, you have to buy an additional thing to put on top of it. So already built into both of these drones. If you don't know what RTK is, it stands for real-time kinematic. And basically that's just precision on steroids. It's gonna make your flights really, really accurate. And especially if you're doing something like surveying or mapping, you're gonna want RTK capability. But with something like surveying, you probably are, again, gonna to wanna to go with something like the Matrice 4E, because uh, it's got a much better camera for that kind of stuff. But RTK is built into both of these. You can hook up with one of the DRTK base stations that DJI sells. There's a two and there's a three. DRTK base station two and three. And they will both hook up with both of these drones. So the new one obviously is the three. It has some better functionality, but you can still hook up both of these drones to the DRTK2, so you don't have to buy a new one if you already got one. They both have smart track, so it's gonna identify a person or a vehicle. You're gonna be able to tap on that, that car or that person, and the drone is gonna automatically follow that object with the camera. It's not gonna move itself, it's not gonna fly alongside the object, but because they both have those big zoom ranges, they're just gonna follow with their cameras a long way. So you, the higher you can get, the better, because once it goes behind a tree or a building, it'll, it'll lose it, it'll keep trying to find it, but it doesn't always find it. But both of these are really easy to use. It was on the M30T first, and now you've also got that on the Matrice 4T. The Matrice 4T has object identification, so you can look on the screen and it'll actually count the cars that are in like a parking lot. It'll count the people that are there as well. It's gonna tell you in the upper right hand corner of the screen how many cars it sees, how many people it sees. It'll also see boats. And there are other algorithms out there for specific things like animals. They'll both do point of interest. So it'll just like you pick a spot and it'll circle around that spot in whatever distance you want. They'll both also do mapping. So you'll be able to set up a grid, fly. It's gonna take all the pictures you need and then you upload it to whatever map stitching program that you use. But you'll be able to take all of those pictures and Pilot2, which is the operating system that these remotes use, is really, really easy to operate. It's gonna work very, very similarly on both of these drones. But again, these drones, the thermal ones, are not great for mapping. You wanna look for something with a better sensor like the Matrice 4E. The good thing is you can do thermal mapping with both of these drones, so you'll be able to stitch those images. So if there's a reason that you need to see a thermal map, you're gonna be able to do that. The Matrice 4T actually does have a couple other tricks up its sleeve, like the fly to mode. So you drop a pin wherever you're pointing, it's gonna ask you what altitude you wanna be at when it gets to that destination and you hit fly to. It's gonna, by itself, just fly over to that spot. So it's a really interesting way to get your drone where it needs to be at any given time. You can do cruise control, so basically you're just gonna set it at a certain speed, go in a certain direction, it's gonna stay going that speed until you turn it off. So just like your car. It does terrain follow, so you want it to be a certain amount above the ground. If there's a hill or something, the drone is gonna move with the earth. So it's not like it's gonna now be like 75 feet because that, that hill down below is 75 feet tall. It's gonna be up 100 feet if that's what you choose above that hill and then up 100 feet when it goes down to flatland as well. You got accessories for both of these drones. You got speakers, you got spotlights. There are third party accessories like parachutes, all sorts of different stuff that they're putting on these drones, but both are capable of that. We see a lot of people using the spotlight, especially when it comes to public safety. Not a lot are really using the speakers on these drones, but you can attach things to the top and I guarantee there will be more and more things that you can attach to the Matrice 4T coming out really, really soon. So with the M30T, you get the RC Plus remote. With the Matrice 4T, you get the RC Plus 2 remote. So 
both very similar. They look a lot alike. There's different ports sort of located around the new one, the RC Plus 2, and it's got a reported longer transmission range than the original as well. But both of these remotes are big, they're bulky, they feel good in your hands, and they both have really bright screens. When you purchase one of these drones, they're gonna come with a hard case where you can put your batteries, you can put your drone, your remote, other accessories that you wanna put in there as well. You can also buy third-party ones, like if you need a bigger case, you can do that as well. Another great thing is you get DJI Care Plus with purchase of both of these drones. And that is huge because if you wreck, if something's gonna happen, you are covered. DJI is gonna take care of you and basically potentially send you a brand new drone. So if yours is totaled, they're gonna send you a new drone. There will be some fees involved, but you're it's a fraction of what it would cost you to buy a completely new drone. In terms of pricing, I know you guys really wanna know what the pricing is. I'm not trying to hide anything, but contact us if you wanna know current pricing, like today's pricing, whenever you call me, I can give you the current pricing. So make sure you contact us. You see the information on the screen below and down in the description. So reach out to us, I'll give you that official pricing. And if you got questions, you got comments, leave them down below. You can call us, you can email us, we're all over the place. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and we really, really appreciate you stopping by. We'll see you next time.